it was a number of years ago. I was I was there by invitation of Morris, Dr. Morris Cirillo. And uh, I had never spoken overseas, Brother Larry. I had never spoken in those uh, uh, kind of uh, meetings like Dr. Cirillo held, where there was such intensity and a lot of healings and miracles. Uh, I had uh, not too long before that been a Baptist preacher, got filled with the Holy Ghost. And so I'd just not been in a, a lot of what, what Pentecost is. And I walked in that place, and I'm telling you, it just almost scared me to death. I did not have any idea that I... I had no, I had like information. I mean, I, I've always had information, but I didn't have the power that was going on in that meeting. And it was such a, it was such a, a, a horrible feeling as it finally came my turn to speak. And when I got to speak, I didn't have that dynamic that those fellas had. And I, the whole place is kind of, well, you know, like, wow, what's happened to our meeting? I got to my room that night and I just fell before the Lord and I prayed through the whole night. I never, I don't remember even going to sleep that night. And uh, next day I spoke again and it was worse than the day before. It was just dead. Oh, no. Deader than a hammer. And so I, uh, that night in the room, I just got so intense with my praying. I, I, I was using my prayer language. I was, I was uh, speaking very clearly to God. I want power. I want this thing on my life. And uh, just this little side note, just previous to that, I had started teaching some on biblical economics. I'd seen a, a paragraph in a A.A. A. Allen uh, book. It said, God's best friend was a multimillionaire. And so I, I went to my Bible to prove that that wasn't true. I said, how in the world could that be? And sure enough, there it was, God. Abraham uh, was, a, was a very rich, the Bible says. And then I think it's Peter that said it, that he was a friend of God. So uh, anyway, with that much little bit of information and I, I was got really interested in what the Bible said about money. And uh, uh, Brother Larry, when I was in that room, I was at, I was at the window praying. And uh, you know how dark it is in Africa. So that gives you all that starlight and uh, just beautiful seeing the heavens. It's almost like dust the Milky Way is. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, there comes a light towards the room and just on the right side of the window, that light manifested and uh, it was a different kind of light. You know, a lot of light, you look at it and you want to look away. This light, you couldn't look away from it. And all of a sudden, the, the voice of God just began to speak to me. He said, John, I'm going to release into your life a revelation of what I want for my people financially. He said, my heart's broken. Words don't affect of my people uh, not having the abundance that they need. And that I provided for them. And man, I tell you, there was a, that was a, I guess that seemed to me like the whole night. I don't know how long it was. And then Larry, I don't know, uh, not being familiar with that kind of thing. I might've been unconscious on the floor. I, I, I don't, I don't know how that was taking place, but it was, it was information being imparted to me. He said, I'm not trying to get money from my children. I'm trying to get money to my children. And, uh, he said, uh, uh, Oh, and one of the things he he just talked to me about not ever not ever getting in a in to where I'm reaching for money. He said if if you know if if there's a problem in a church or in a time where I preach and there's any confusion about the money, just step away, step away. So I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. But uh, so from that uh, the next morning, I went into the meeting and. I didn't have a lot of information. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like anything like what I have now on the subject, but I really taught biblical economics with some power. And then like a phenomenon took place in that meeting. All of a sudden, the, uh, the offering was time to take. They had little bowls that they were taking the offering with and uh, come down second row and bowl, bowls were full, full of money. So a uh, young man ran out and he got, he got a pillowcase, two pillowcases or three, whatever it was that they needed. And of course, you know, Africa, they don't, they don't pass the money. They, all, they were doing a little, that little sway that they do and had the bed. And then they passed that uh, pillowcase on down. And that pillowcase, pillowcase came back pretty fluffy with money. And so I said, okay, let's pray. And I heard a man say, wait, don't pray. And I thought, mercy, what kind of a deal is that? Uh, is he up up here, coming up here to cause trouble? Should I acknowledge him? He said, I did not do what God said to do. 
And he brought more money. And then I said, let's pray. And another way, I did not do what God said to do. Way up in the balcony, way. And so now the people in the balcony, but rather than running all the way down out of the balcony, they were throwing the money over the edge of the balcony and others were bringing it forward. And it went on for a season. It seemed like forever to me that it just went on every time I find me. They were coming and then you, you know how that gets it when that really giving hits in Africa. Here come shoes. Here come shirts. <laughs> it looked like it's going to be stripped down to, to their underwear. So I had to, all of a sudden I heard a voice say, stop the giving. Stop the giving. Dr. Cirillo stopped the offering. And I never heard that. Um, I went back to my room from there. And Larry, that night I was just, the devil rode me like a goat. I'm telling you, he said, these people are not going to have any money. They, they live far away. They're not going to have money to eat. You've taken everything they have. And uh, I just got to where I was so miserable. I just wanted to get home. I couldn't, I couldn't get all of it put together. It was too much. Too many things came at me at one time uh, in, a, in, in, this, in, a, in a spiritual vein that I'd never known before. Because before it was pretty cut and dried. You'd study it. You'd get your outline. You'd preach, you know it. You had to take the offering at this time or that, but this was a whole different operation with God. It just moved through my life. But the devil, too, he moved that night and he had me. When I got up the next morning, I said, when Joseph Chuk, the young man that came, he's from Inambra, he came for me and he said, uh, uh, Wait, do you see what I have? Uh, come and see, come and see, he was saying. So we went out there and, I, and he had a new car sitting there. And I said, Well, Praise the Lord, I said. They got rid of that old rattle trap of a car that we were driving in because of very no air conditioning, nothing. And he said, no, no, no. My uncle gave me this car last night. And I said, wow. He said, I gave what God said to give in that offering. And I went to the aunt's house, who's married to this wealthy businessman. And in leaving, he gave me that new Toyota that he had sitting in his driveway. Wow. So I had people running up to the winning window telling about miracle money. Money had just come to them. God had multiplied back their offering. And then Larry, way down 25 years later, in Cahoga Falls. I don't remember just which state Cahoga Falls is in, but I remember Cahoga Falls. I was teaching and I was bringing this testimony of what happened in Abba. And a, a black gentleman stood up with a suit very well dressed and he said may i speak i thought oh boy here we go he said i was in that meeting he said i had my wedding coming and he said i had purchased i had ordered a wedding garment and he said when i was in the meeting i had the money in hand to pay the tailor and he said god said pay the money give the money so i gave the Garment money, and he says, into the offering plate. Now, this, this, is, this is 30 years later, 25, 30 years later. He's a doctor now, a very respected man in the city of Cahoga Falls. And so uh, he says, as he turned, as when I turned to leave the building, he said, there was the tailor walking towards me. And he said, I, I didn't know what was I going to say. And he said, he said uh, God's, the tailor said, God spoke to me and said, I make two wedding garments for you. And there's no price. It's going to be free. Praise God. Larry, um, that thing just keeps going with this guy in, this, in Cahoga Falls. He says, I, I, I walked out, and as I was walking out and headed to the bus, he said, a fine car. That's how he described it. A fine car stopped. And the gentleman said, are you the young doctor that's having his wedding uh, uh, and has taken a room on the uh, ocean front one night? He said, you will be with me two weeks free. The room will be free. God spoke to me in the in the meeting. And, and there was all these little incidental things. A car, I couldn't hardly get away from the place. People coming and telling me what God had done for me. And uh, now all across the world, when I when God speak, has me speak that particular message on the hundredfold, miracles start happening in finances. They just start happening. Yeah.